Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at a feature that is here in Illustrator CS2 or CS3 if you're using CS3. It's called Live Trace and it's a pretty interesting feature here. Um, it sort of replaces the Auto Trace tool that you're going to have in CS but it works a bit differently. So ideally you need Illustrator CS2 in order to uh, follow along here with this tutorial. Um, the big advantage here to Live Trace is that it automatically will convert any image into vector graphics. And the advantage to being able to do that is you can then resize your photos or whatever to any size you want. Now, bear in mind, it doesn't do an exact photorealistic job. Um, but you can resize stuff, you can edit individual paths, you can change colors of things, you can change the way things look, and there's all kinds of things you can do. And it's not only photos, you might be wanting to vectorize. Uh, paths or sketches and we're going to do a little sketch here in this tutorial. Um, you can also uh, fine-tune the live trace settings. Live trace isn't just something you click and it just does whatever by default, whatever the settings that Adobe punched in. No, you can edit the live trace settings to achieve the absolute most precise drawing that you can or that you want, the most perfect drawing you can get. Um, so that's really helpful and live trace if you do a lot of tracing uh, photos or things like that by hand live trace is going to save you hours of retracing and drawing work so first thing we need to do to start this if you have CS2 or CS3 you can download the live trace uh, work files work along files and you can get them from the site that's www.tutvid.com you go download them from the site, the download section, and I have them here. I'm just going to open up the bridge, and we have here the live sketch photo and the live trace sketch. It's actually supposed to be live trace photo, but you're going to have this photo and this sketch. We're going to start with the sketch here, and I'm just going to drag it into Illustrator. I'm going to minimize the bridge, and I'm going to scale it down a little bit. I'm using Shift and Alt to scale toward the center and Shift to constrain proper proportions. I'm going to deselect that, or excuse me, don't deselect it. Um, I'm going to reselect it there. And the first thing about this is this is only a linked image, so we're just going to quickly embed it here. You can come up to this top toolbar and just hit Embed. That embeds the photo. Um, now, you don't necessarily have to embed the photo in order to live trace. Matter of fact, if I undo that, you can see the live trace command is still up here in the toolbar. But if you've got a fast enough machine, this file isn't too big. Just embed it, just so we don't run into any issues. So let's take a look here at how exactly we can use Live Trace. Now, the first step to Live Tracing something is you actually have to select the object. And up here in the toolbar, as I mentioned a second ago, you have to click the Live Trace button. So we're going to do that here with the sketch, Live Trace. And you can see that what we have is a sketchy looking sketch <laughs> that sort of resembles the original sketch. It's kind of sketchy. Um, and in this case, actually, Illustrator has done a pretty good job just with the defaults. But let's just tweak it a little bit just to take it a little further. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little better. Make sure I've got it selected. Now, up here in the toolbar, we have this option called threshold. And the higher the threshold is, the more black is going to be used in the image. The lower the threshold, the more white. So I'm going to up the threshold to, let's say, 190, or right around 190, deselect, and it's going to re-render the image, and you can see we have much more black now. I like that a little more because it resembles the original sketch more. Now, when you are tracing, you're probably going to want to compare Illustrator's trace with your original image. Well, Adobe kept that in mind, and you can see up here in the toolbar, we have these two triangles. One has sort of cut stepped edges, that's the raster image, and the other has smooth edges, and that's the vector image. And these are the two viewing options for your vector trace, the new trace that Adobe Illustrator just created, and the original vector or raster image here. So I'm going to select the view options for the raster image, and you can see that the default is no image. I'm going to select that to original image. And what that's going to do is now is displaying the original image. The reason we don't see it is because here on the vector side, we're telling Illustrator to display the tracing result. Okay? If I switch that to outlines, you're going to see we can see the original sketch and all these teal outlines. You probably can hardly see them if you can see them at all. It's very light teal. 
but they are there. I could just set it to not show the tracing result at all, but that'd be kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to set it to tra show the tracing result and no image, but just keep that in mind if you want to compare the original images. Now, this is kind of a rough sketch of this sketch, which in the case of a sketch isn't too bad, but if you're working with other images and things, you're probably going to want some other options. And Illustrator provides you with a bunch of presets, and you can choose between any of these presets. We're going to take a closer look at some of these presets in a minute when we do a photo. Right now, it's set to custom. There are also the tracing options dialog where you can get some more advanced options. We're going to take a look at this dialog too in just a minute. But for now, this is pretty much how this image, this is how I want this to look. This looks pretty good right here. Now, one of the big advantages, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, to Live Trace is that you can keep editing, or excuse me, you can edit beyond Adobe's Trace. Okay, so you can go in, you can tweak these paths, you can refill them with different colors or whatever you want. Now, the disadvantage to Live Trace is that in order to do that, you have to expand this object. And the reason that's a disadvantage is because as soon as you expand this object, you can no longer go back and edit it. See, I could deselect this, save this dot, save this document, excuse me, close it down, open it up a year from now. I could select this object, and I could still come in here and mess around with my options. Okay, when I expand this, I can no longer mess around with, let's say, the threshold, or change the preset, or change my view options. Well, the view options don't really matter, but I couldn't change any of my tracing options. And when you get into some of the color stuff, there's some more options and things. But the point is, you can't go back and edit the Illustrator's Live Trace as soon as you expand it. But if you want to edit the paths, you have to expand it. So you kind of have to weigh the differences there. If you think you need to go back and change it later, you can always just duplicate this tracing object. You can see here on my Layers palette, this isn't a normal layer. This is a tracing layer. And that's another reason we have to expand it, because even if I use the Direct Selection tool, I can't select any of those paths. So with that layer selected, I'm going to hit the Expand button. So when I hit expand, you're going to see I have all of these paths and all of these anchor points here. So Illustrator has really created all of these paths. What I can do with the direct selection tool is select, let's say, that big path there, select my foreground color, and I could change the color to red. Okay, and the reason it did not do that is because I have my color here set to grayscale. It's important. Change that to RGB. And now you can see it's red. So you can see with live trace you can get some very interesting effects here but that's not where we're going to stop we are going to take a look here at a photo as well but before we do that I just also would like to point out that you can come in here and you can edit the fills but you can also add a stroke if you like okay we could add a half pixel stroke to that you can see it's added that stroke to all of those uh, paths I don't really like that though and also if you open up this group you can see that Illustrator has created all of these paths or a whole ton of paths some are compound paths but for the most part they're regular paths basically a compound path it's just a path that has another path within it like a hole cut in a path it's a compound path okay so you've got this group here with all these paths and if I select the group it selects the entire sketch so let's move on to a photo Let's come up here and select the Go to Bridge button, and we're just going to drag in the photo. It's a photo of the skier. It was actually photo of the week quite some weeks ago. I'm going to come up here to Edit, Cut, and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to go to Edit, Paste. So I just pasted that on a new layer. I am going to shut off the visibility of that layer for just a second. I'm going to select Layer 1. I'm going to lock it by selecting that little square in between the eyeball and the layer thumbnail, and I'm going to hit the little eyeball. So that layer will disappear. I'm going to turn layer 2 back on by using that same eyeball method. Now, in order to trace this, we're going to use a slightly different method. It's still live trace. It's just a different way of getting to live trace. I'm going to embed the image as usual. And I'm going to come up here to Object, Live Trace. You can see we now have an option for live trace. And you can just make a live trace, which will just make a default live trace. You can make an expand which will make that live trace and then automatically expand it so you don't have to go through the extra step of clicking the expand button going to the object menu you can see there's an expand option you can actually use for any of your artwork and there's also this make and convert to live paint so you can use live paint right off the bat 
But what I'm interested in here is the tracing options. Let's take a look at these tracing options. Okay, so up pops this dialog box. Now, this is a very smart way to use live trace. Very smart, especially if you have a slow machine. And it really works as you use live trace more and more and more, and you kind of get to know live trace. Like you know what, let's say, a 128 threshold is going to give you in a black and white mode, or a 200 threshold is going to give you, or in some cases a 50 threshold, or whatever your threshold is. Or if you're using this in color, you know what a max color of 90 or 100 is going to give you, or what you know a three pixel blur or whatever is going to give you. The reason that this is a smarter way of using this is because if you're using a slower computer, live trace, especially on more complex images, is a real memory hog. And when I say real memory hog, I am not kidding at all. Live trace will slow your computer down like crazy, and you'll have a loading bar come up across your screen, and it can get really bad. So bad that you might find yourself going and, you know, getting yourself something to drink, coming back to your computer, going and getting yourself something to eat, coming back to your computer, maybe going and get yourself something else to drink, and it'll go on and on and on, and it'll be horrible, and you'll probably wish you'd never done it. And then when you actually get your tracing results, it might not even be what you want. So then you have to edit it and go through the whole process again. So as you can imagine, it can get a little time consuming, and then live trace, you don't feel like you're saving as much time, even though you probably still are saving time. But that's beside the point, sort of. Sort of is, sort of isn't. This is going to save you time, though, when you get to know what live trace options are going to look like before you even apply them. Because there's a preview box here, but again, that's going to require Illustrator to render this, which is going to require some time. So let's look at tracing this image. Now, because this is a photo, we're probably not just going to want to use black and white or even grayscale, but we're still going to take a look at what black and white is going to do. I'm going to select a threshold of about 150. I'm not going to give it any blur. I'm not going to output my colors to swatches. That we may do if we're working in color, and I'll show you that in a minute. Blur is just going to basically cut down on the sharp edges in your paths. Sometimes it gives you a good result, but most of the time I don't like using it. You might want to use it if you're looking to cut down on your render time, which it helps cut down because then you don't have as many anchor points to render. Just sort of smooths everything out. We'll take a look at that. Resample is a way of reducing, or in some cases increasing, the detail that a trace gets in your image. See, the trace is based on the image's resolution. And in this case, this resolution, as we can see up here in the toolbar, has 72 points per, per inch. Excuse me, And that means that the trace is not going to be like as tight. It's not going to have as sharp corners. It's not going to be as detailed. It's not going to be as precise. If you bring an image in that's 300 dpi, or 300 points per inch, that is going to be a much, much more complicated, much better looking trace. Obviously, again, the downside is larger file size, larger rendering time. But you can, in here, resample. Let's say you bring in a 300 pixel uh, resolution image, or DPI. You can resample that at 72. Sort of dumb the image down a little bit, but hey, that might be what you want. You can essentially do this whole resampling thing just by editing the original resolution of your image. Like if I were to take this image over to Photoshop and just up the DPI or well, really downsize the DPI of the image. So that it's just sort of a complicated little thing. If you don't understand it, don't really worry about it. It's not too uh, it's not too important. Um, although it does have its uses, don't get me wrong. Trace settings. You can set Illustrator to create fills as well as strokes. Strokes, they can be very important. I'll show you how we can use them in just a second. We're just going to leave path fitting and minimum area and corner angle. Those are all things you can mess around with, as well as max stroke, weight, and length. That obviously gets activated if we were to activate strokes. Those are all kind of no-brainers. You can just mess around with them. And then we have reviewing options again for the raster, no image, and vector. Just show our tracing result. So we're going to hit preview. Now this is just a black and white. You can see it's just giving us this rough outline. Now this tracing options dialog box gives us some interesting st statistical, not really statistical, but just sort of like info about your trace. Tells us how many paths are created, how many anchor points, how many colors, how many areas, and the image resolution. Let's shut off preview. Let's change our mode to color. All right. Now. Some of the custom options here whoops, are color 6, and that basically means it's going to convert the mode to color, and it's going to use a max of 6 colors. If I preview this, you're going to see it's a pretty rough trace. If I up that to color 16, 
It's now using 16 colors. Looks slightly better, only slightly. Then you have photo low fidelity and photo high fidelity, which are other options. Photo high fidelity will generate the most photorealistic image that Illustrator provides as a preset. We can still go further than this by adding more colors. See, this is only at 64 max colors. I can up this to 100 if I want. Again, you can see I get the little progress bar, and depending on the complexity of the image and all that, you may find yourself getting up and leaving. But you can see now this trace is not 40 or so paths. This is 1,300 paths with 8,000 anchor points and 84 colors. So there's a huge difference. And if we set the path to fit tighter, oops, let's down that to one. You're going to see now we have 9,000 anchor points because the tighter the path fits, the more tightly it's going to conform to the different colors in your image. So these are all different things. And output the swatches, by the way, all these different colors it's using, if I were to check this off, it would pop all those colors over into my swatches palette. I'm not going to do that here for the example because I would just load up my swatches palette. And I don't really want to do that right here. One last thing I want to show you here in the tracing options dialog box is, I'm going to shut off preview for a second. And I am going to set this to black and white. I'm going to uncheck fills and I'm just going to check strokes. Okay. There we go. Strokes and then uncheck fills. Now, the max stroke length, I don't really care about that. It's the max stroke weight. I'm going to reduce that to one. That way, every stroke, every path it makes is going to be stroked with a one pixel black. And what this is going to do for me is create a trace of my photo. Now you can see it didn't do a very good job there, number one, because I don't want any of this blur. Okay, that's going to help us a little bit, but also the threshold. We need to up the threshold. Let's try 200, maybe a little over 200. Ooh, that's, that's bad. Let's try downing the threshold a little bit. All right, now we're not getting very good results with this image, as you can see. Maybe it wasn't the best image to use for this example, but with certain images, you can really get some pretty good results. Try reducing the minimum area. And that tightens things up a little bit, but that's really what you're going to use strokes for. For the most part, we can vary the stroke weight. If I say 5 pixels, you're going to see there's a ski pole, got a little thicker, and things like that. And then if I hit trace, it's going to make the trace just like that. Now, it's not the last thing. I'm just going to edit this preset and just say photo high fidelity. So we have semi photorealistic trace here. Now, let's say you make this live trace, and you're going through your stuff, and you realize you really don't want it. There's no button here that just says, get rid of live trace. What you have to do is come up here to Object, Live Trace, and hit Release. That brings you back to your original photo. So that's something that can be a little tricky. And again, you can just come up to Live Trace and just hit Make, if you just want to make it with the default settings. Another thing I want to quickly point out is in Live Trace, under Tracing Options, you can change all of your settings and then save it as a preset. See the save as preset button? That's another time saver. Okay, but always remember when you finish with your live trace, in some cases it may not be necessary, but in this case I'm going to do it and I like to do it most of the time when I'm using this. Just expand your artwork. You see all these paths we have. Quite a few paths here and I can now come in here and select any of these single paths and I could just change the color to anything I wanted. So that's Live Trace. That's how you use Live Trace. It's a pretty big feature here in CS2, and it's pretty interesting. And if you do a lot of tracing, nine chances out of ten, it's going to save you some time. And I like it a lot. It's a really cool feature. You can use it for a lot of things, for just capturing outlines to create logos, uh, backgrounds for websites. There were the possibilities are just endless, and the things you can do with it to quickly just get a rough vector trace of something. It's really cool, and there's a lot of neat things you can do with it. So that's Live Trace for you, and I certainly hope you've learned something from it. That's it for here for now. Excuse me. <laughs> Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.